Despite not being a pro device, the iPad Airs are still really powerful computers. And I really wanted to put that to the test in this video. So I've created this entire desk setup centered around it. And I'll be putting away my MacBook Pro and my PC and using the iPad Air completely on its own for an entire week of work. I've got loads of creative tasks to do. I've got a podcast, photo and video editing, lots of script writing, taking notes, Zoom calls, and even some gaming planned. So I've really got everything to do. So it should be quite a fun week. And because I'm using the iPad Air for absolutely everything, it also means this video you're watching right now was edited entirely in 4K on there too. If you are more interested in this setup, then be sure to watch my other video, which explains a lot, which I'll link in the description. I'm also super happy to tell you that this video was sponsored by Paperlike 2. Anyway, let's get into my week. So I might as well get started today as today is the first day I've been using this setup completely. And I've got to admit, I am starting easy on this one. So what I've been doing is mainly photo editing today. I've been a strong advocate for editing photos on the iPad for a long time. I've made videos about it in the past and it's really nice and simple on here. One of the best things is you can obviously just pop out your memory card from your camera. I can slap it straight into the little dongle I've got on the side here, and then I can bring all of those photos, raw files, JPEGs or whatever, straight into Lightroom on the iPad. I must admit, I do prefer the mobile version of Lightroom for photo editing, and I know a lot of people will disagree with that and say that the desktop version is way better, and that's fine. I've just grown to really love the cloud backup on here, and using the Apple Pencil to edit photos really is a joy. The desk setup though, however, is holding up well, but I must admit I like being hands-on when I'm editing photos. So I did unplug the iPad after a while and just edited the rest of the photos being sat on the sofa. For the rest of the day, I've mainly been using a combination of Google Docs and OneNote to write down video scripts and generate ideas moving forward. So for day one, things have been going quite smoothly, but I'll check back in with you tomorrow. Another good day with the setup in general today, although it could be from my more basic and limited use. More than anything, I've just had a big day of admin. So that means I've been sitting on Google Docs, typing up video scripts, and I've been replying to some overdue emails. Yes, I am sorry, I am one of those people. I also finished off some photo edits for Kuroku, and I also set up a kit.co page for all of the YouTube gear I use. So if you're interested in what I use to make these YouTube videos, then I will link that in the description below. I did have some freelance work as well, which means I've been using Google Hangouts and Zoom, which the iPad does handle well. Although I do wish I could connect an external camera like my Sony A6400, because to get a good angle on my face when I'm in those calls, I have to take the iPad out of the desk setup and kind of prop it over there so there's a good angle on my face. It's also a bit annoying when you switch app, you lose the video feed too. You've still got audio, but that's something the iPad can't do, which is a bit of a shame. Not a bad day in total, although I know I've got some more challenging days ahead of me, especially when it comes to editing this video. For day three, I've been podcasting first thing in the morning. And as you can tell, the desk is already starting to get a bit messy and things are starting to change around. But let me show you very quickly what I had set up to get the podcasting going. So here's the podcasting setup. I actually had to remove that thing out the left side because it was so flimsy and use a different one. So that's a problem. But um, here's how it looks. We've got Ben there on the right hand side. You can wave there, Ben, if you like. And uh, voice notes is going on the other side, or sorry, voice memos is on the big screen. Everything's recording and headphones plugged straight into the road uh, mic there. So it's all good and we're ready to roll. The built-in voice recorder isn't perfect. You can't control the gain or anything like that. But I know there's loads of other apps out there which would probably be a lot better for podcasting, which gives you a bit more control. But I just needed something simple and it seems to have worked really well. The last podcast I recorded, I actually did it on the iPad 2 and that came out perfectly fine. So for a kind of simple go-to one, voice memos or notes or whatever it's called is actually really quite good. For the rest of the day today, I've actually started putting together the video file in LumaFusion. LumaFusion is probably the best video editor you can get on iPad, but I'm not very used to it. I can tell that the biggest thing that I'm gonna to have to get over is switching to LumaFusion over Premiere Pro. I've also found using touch rather than mouse input seems to be just a bit better, which is weird. I thought the mouse would be a bit more kind of precise, but from what I've discovered today, or at least at the moment is touch seems to be the way forward, which would make sense. It's made for touch. Anyway, that's pretty much all I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to try and put together that video. I'll probably do some emails and a bit of typing and a bit of uh, script planning, but overall, 
that's my day so far. Starting to see some cracks in the setup, but I'm still enjoying it at least. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I've been searching for the best multi-platform app for taking notes on the iPad for quite a long time, but I think my search is slowly getting close to an end. Despite there being so many good ones out there, I need one that works across Windows, Mac, and iOS equally well because I use all three platforms. So far, I've tried Google Keep, Apple Notes with a web app, Evernote, GoodNotes, and Microsoft OneNote, but so far OneNote appears to be the closest I've got to making things work across all those systems. The iPad, Mac, and Windows app are all well developed and they work pretty much how I want them to. I am still testing out loads of different apps still though and I'm gonna probably put a video on my thoughts about that at some point. So if that's something to see, make sure you're subscribed. Anyway, taking notes in general is made a lot easier thanks to today's sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector for the iPad that's been created to make it really feel like you're writing, sketching, or doodling on paper. The textured surface of Paperlike grips the Apple Pencil a lot better than normal, making you more accurate with your inputs, and it gets rid of that unnatural feeling of writing on glass. Each pack comes with two Paperlike screen protectors and a simple to follow easy application kit, but my favorite part of the whole thing is the nice matte finish it leaves and the way it pretty much removes all fingerprints from the screen. So if you love taking notes, drawing, or just hate fingerprints getting on your iPad, then be sure to check them out in the link below. And thanks again to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Okay, so today I really dove into LumaFusion on the iPad and started pushing the first few days together. And I'm finding it simple and nice at best, and at worst, it's just flat out annoying. I keep finding myself having to Google things that I already know how to do on Premiere Pro and just finding out how to do them in LumaFusion. But the bigger annoyance today was I found out that LumaFusion doesn't support .mov files. So that means I had to crack out my MacBook Pro for the first time all week just to re-export a load of assets into MP4 so they would work with LumaFusion, which was really frustrating. On the flip side, gaming on the iPad has continued to be an ever-growing and excellent experience. Now Google Stadia is here, there's access to those AAA games that a lot of us have been waiting for. And after playing through Cyberpunk on Xbox One in somewhat unoptimal quality, I've started again on here as it runs so much better on Stadia, but I also kicked back with some Apple Arcade games too. For a controller, I'm still using this 8-bit Do SN30 Pro gamepad, which is just a wonderful replica of a SNES controller with the modern touches of the dual thumbsticks. This is a perfect little partner for the iPad and it lets you play any modern game nice and easily. Also, as an added bonus, it also works on the Nintendo Switch, which is awesome. So for the rest of the day, I'm gonna continue editing on LumaFusion and then I'll probably play a bit more Cyberpunk as well. Okay, so for the last couple of days of this setup, I've just been sitting at this desk editing the video together in LumaFusion, amongst some other miscellaneous stuff as well. And I really wanna get this out there because I think LumaFusion is an amazing piece of software and that combined with Apple's A14 chip is cutting through my Sony A7 III footage like butter. It's genuinely a very fast editor, but I'm just finding it really tricky to get used to and I think it's because I'm just so used to editing in Premiere Pro. But if I think if you've never edited a video before, LumaFusion actually feels really obvious and powerful because the more I'm learning about it, the more simple and easy to use it seems. However, I won't be changing anytime soon. And I must admit, I did get to breaking point a few times today where I was really tempted to bust out my MacBook Pro and just finish this whole project off in Premiere Pro because it would save me so much time and energy. But I'm not gonna do that. I said I would edit this whole thing on the iPad and do the whole week of work on the iPad. So I'm going to do that for you. So if this video looks a little rough around the edges, uh, don't worry, I am trying my best. Anyway, I will check back in with you tomorrow, which will tail up the entire week. So that's the entire week run on this iPad desk setup. It's actually been quite a fun challenge, but it certainly had its bumps along the way. What I will say is I'm pretty blown away by everything that I've been able to do on the iPad. Every task aside from video editing has been totally doable and in many ways, just as good as a laptop or PC experience albeit just a different one. It's far from perfect though, and I think the most prominent and frustrating thing throughout this entire experience has been the black bars on the side of the monitor, which aside from a few apps are a constant annoyance. I've been racking my brains trying to think why Apple won't allow the iPad to fill the entire screen, 
And I've got two thoughts on it. One is iPad OS just doesn't support a 16 by 9 ratio output. And two, they want to do something more than just extend the display. Having two screens at your disposal opens up a lot of possibilities and Apple still might be deciding what those can be. Those are my thoughts anyway. Other little pains I've discovered were some apps don't play well with a mouse input or are outright better just with touch controls. And the file system, while I'm really glad it's here, still feels somewhat underbaked. And from what I can tell, not every app supports it or just doesn't have access. Obviously, there's been some things that I've really loved about using an iPad as my main computer. And first and foremost, it's that size and portability. I know I planned this as a desk setup, but being able to unplug the iPad knowing it's fully charged and it has that full processing power under the hood has been really nice. Editing photos on the sofa, taking notes on the kitchen table, and watching YouTube wherever on such a tiny device was a pure joy. Of course, using the desk for actual work has been great too, from simple typing to more complex photo edits, it's a fantastic place to get stuff done. Not to mention the gaming experience is only getting better thanks to Google Stadia support and Apple Arcade's ongoing additions. Even with all that good stuff, setting it aside is still tough for me to recommend an iPad over a MacBook or a PC if you can only get one. But you can do a serious amount of work on here now. It's a legitimate computer in its own right. And if you're worried that you might need an iPad Pro for these styles of workloads, then you can put your mind to rest there too. These iPad Air models from 2020 are seriously powerful, and I didn't want to experience any form of lagging or crashing or anything like that. It's been a really awesome little machine. So there we have it. If you enjoyed this challenge or just found the desk setup awesome, then be sure to subscribe. That helps me out a lot more than you think it does, and it means I can keep making videos like this one. Hit the thumbs up button on the way out, that would be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.